Hi there, this is Cheryl Richardson and um, welcome to this week's Facebook Live. I'm glad that you're here and that you're going to be joining me. I know you are in a few minutes. Um, so if you are with me, make sure that you comment. Let me know where you're from. It'd be great to know where you are, what part of the world you're in. And um, I'll wait a couple of minutes and welcome people um, while um, you all get on. I'm here, uh, it's a little dark here uh, in Massachusetts. It's that time of year when, um, well, today's rainy and it's very overcast and so it makes it even darker, but pretty soon we're gonna be turning the clocks back and I hate that day. <laughs> I don't like that day at all, um, but I surrender to it. So let's see, hi Carol, welcome. I'm glad you're here and Teresa, welcome to you and Cynthia and Lisa. Hi Lisa, welcome. And Jim Laurie. Welcome to you and Diane. Thank you. Nice to see you here. Carol from Glasgow, Scotland. I love that place. Been, have been there a couple of times. Um, and Jess from Ontario. Welcome to you too. And Jude, Judy Harrison. Hi. Welcome. Hi, Terry. And Brenda from Ireland. Whereabouts in Ireland, I wonder, Brenda. And um, Cynthia from Athens, Greece, welcome. Cynthia, my husband is Greek, and I've not been to Greece yet. Um, that's probably one of the next ones on our list. Um, and hi, Loria, uh, is it Lori? Probably Lori from South Mississippi, welcome to you. And Diane, um, who's heading towards summer, and I'm jealous, but <laughs> happy for you too. Hi, Mandy from Australia, also heading to summer. And Judy, hi, welcome. And um, Ginny and Marissa from Sweden, one of my closest, oldest, dearest friends, is just outside of Stockholm in Sweden. Um, Teresa from Ohio, welcome. Nice to see you here. And Diane, and yes, Diane says it was a long, cold winter on Australia. So I hope we don't have a long, cold winter here. I really don't. <laughs> hi, Pia from San Diego, and Tess, and Steve. Hi, Steve. Welcome. Always love when the men show up. It's a good thing. Linda, welcome to you. And Man and Lucy from Quebec, welcome. And um, Tara and Sherry from South Africa, welcome to you, Sherry. The other side of the world, right? And Susan and Sarah and Deborah from Melbourne, welcome to you. When I think about Melbourne, um, Deborah, I always think about the black swans. It was my, the first time in my life that I'd ever seen black swans. And I'm pretty sure it was in like the river somewhere in Melbourne when I was there. And hi, Brenton from London. So lovely to see you here, my dear. And um, boy, I would one of my one of the things I'd love to do is get to London before Christmas. I don't think it's going to happen this year, but I keep dreaming in my head that it's that I'm there. <laughs> hey, Scott from Texas, welcome. And Tina from Greenland, welcome to you. And um, Carol from hey, Staffordshire. And uh, Deb from Utah. Wow, we have a lot of people from a lot of different places. And I just so appreciate that you all join me here. Um, I really do. And so I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about. I woke up this morning and I was, um, it was a really gray drab day. And I woke up and thought, I just, I felt depressed. I just felt like, ugh, you know, there's a heaviness here in the States in particular, but there's a heaviness all over the world. And I felt it and I got up and then I looked outside and it was rainy and low, low cloud cover. And I thought, okay, what is the opposite of what I'd normally do? And what I'd normally do is make myself a cup of tea and maybe sit and read for a little bit or watch a little television, catch up on the day, you know, catch up on the news of the day, minimally. <laughs> um, but I thought, what's the opposite of what I'd normally do? And the opposite was on Tuesday mornings in particular, uh, going to the gym, because I usually don't go to the gym on Tuesday mornings. I usually work out here at home. So I got my butt up and I got dressed and I went to the gym and um, had a really good workout. I, I belong to a CrossFit gym, so we all work out together in a group. Excuse me, and when I go, the workouts are different every time. And I love that, I love variety. And I went to the gym and after an hour of being there, really sweating and working hard, I felt so much better. And it was such a reminder 
of how important it is to move our bodies in order to not only improve our physiology, but our psychology as well, our minds. So um, when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about, some of you I'm sure have seen, I'm assuming have seen my blogs for the last couple of weeks about just the craziness that's going on here in the States. You know, we really, we really are in um, a significant time of change on the planet. And I know because I hear from a lot of you that this is a really tough time for a lot of people. I know that today when I was out um, doing errands, I would turn on NPR here in the States. And, you know, I'm always hearing about what's happening to the rainforests or what's happening here with the Senate hearings and the, the, uh, the whole Kavanaugh, you know, um, su Supreme Court uh, vote and um, what's happening to animals. I mean, it's just so easy to feel like this is such a crappy time to be on the planet, isn't it? It's so easy to feel anxious and to feel hopeless. And um, it's important now more than ever to recognize, I try to step back and the, the blogs that I've written for the last two weeks, especially this last one, is really my effort to kind of step back and not get, not not give in to hopelessness, but instead to really pay attention to um, what I can do to help make the world a better place. Nature is incredibly resilient and always wins. It adapts in some way and it evolves. Human beings, not so much, although we evolve intellectually, mentally, we evolve physically. Um, we evolve spiritually, although it doesn't seem that way all the time. And, uh, but we are a species that could be extinct on the planet as well. And so uh, we have a tremendous amount of power to change things. And I just wanted to talk a little bit about some of the things you can do to sort of weather this time and to feel more empowered and to feel like you're contributing and really um, making a difference, you know, making a difference, whether it's, as simple as doing things like recycling, recycling as much as you can, plastic, paper, metals, whatever, glass, whatever it is. You know, every time you recycle something rather than put it in the rubbish, you're making a difference on the planet. You really are. Um, and when you conserve energy, when you um, switch your light bulbs, for example, from the old fashioned kind, can't believe I'm calling them old fashioned, but when you start using, you know, LED light bulbs, you save money on, on electricity, you use less power, it makes a difference in the world. When you plant a tree, you know, Michael and I over the last 12 years have planted, I think 30 trees and um, planted another one this year, I mentioned during last, the last Facebook Live, in honor of Louise Hay and also of Poupon, both of their ashes are, are, have gone in with the tree, uh, you know, the soil. And um, planting a tree, uh, choosing live plants, some ferns for your home or your flat or your apartment. Um, ferns, for example, are plants that cleanse the air. They do amazing, amazing um, filtration of the air. You know, things that are not only honoring your self-care, but honor the self-care of the planet in some way. And I'm sure that, I mean, I would love to hear from you about what you do, the little things that you do to contribute to the betterment of the planet in some way. Certainly we donate money, we donate our time, um, we vote, we sign petitions, we do what we can to support the causes that matter to us. We protect our own land, you know, doing things like not using pesticides or chemicals on your land so that the nature, the wildlife around you can thrive is a really important way to contribute to the betterment of the planet. Now, what do we do as people? You know, I mean, what do we do as human beings interacting with one another? You know, one of the things that's really tough here in the States is the fact that we all have such instant access to one another. And, um, what do I want to say? It's, uh, we, we not only have instant access, but we can, we have kind of a cloaked access, right? Because we can uh, comment and post on social media and nobody actually really sees us, right? Or talks to us, um, but we can communicate with each other that way. Now, what's really good about that 
is that we can share love with one another. People, you know, stay connected to their families and friends and celebrate successes and new births and new beginnings and new jobs and support each other in leaving soulless jobs or, you know, when somebody moves, there's ways that we can be incredibly supportive and loving to one another on social media. And there's ways that we can do a lot of harm. And so today when I was um, just thinking about the Facebook Live, I thought about how uh, nourishing and supportive, self-supportive it is. What a powerful act of self-care it is to be kind to one another. And I know I say that a lot. But before that, let me just say that um, it's really important that we recognize that when we read something online, for example, or you see something on the news, and you have a strong reaction to it, any kind of strong reaction, first and foremost, what we need to do is look at what buttons just got pushed within us. Nine times out of 10, when somebody has a very strong reaction to something, let me just say, when I have a strong reaction to something, I know that a lot of my reaction is historical. It's not just present day. So, for example, here in the States, when people are watching um, the, this whole conversation about a, a sexual assault and watching Dr. Ford's testimony, um, reading tweets from the president or from other politicians or from other people, many of us are getting re-triggered, um, re-traumatized. Listen, the last stats I read was one in three women have been assaulted. And so it's absolutely normal that we get triggered when we're seeing this stuff in the news all the time. And it's important to recognize that when we get triggered, we regress and we, we, start, we start engaging, uh, or we get defensive in a way that kept us safe as kids. So sometimes, for example, when people are reading um, what I've written, and they post something negative, which is not a lot of the time, frankly, and I'm grateful for that. But if somebody posts something negative, I know they just got triggered. I know that they're in a regressed state. I know that it's not the soul of who that person is. I know it's the wounded part of them, just like it's the wounded part of me when my buttons get pushed. And at some point, we need to start taking responsibility for our own healing and our own reactions so that we can contribute to a more partnership way of being on the planet rather than a, a dominator uh, way, which is having power over, using control, using aggression to try and get our needs met. It's been, a way the, it's been the way the world has worked for millennia, but it doesn't work. And we're seeing the results of that. So it starts with ourselves. You know, if, you're, if, you're, if your trauma is being re-triggered, please, please get yourself some support. I mean, right now, I can't tell you how many women I speak to where I say to them, get into therapy, get into a support group, you know, find safe people that you can talk to, people who will just listen, not try to fix it, not try to talk you out of it, not debate you or argue a position. Like this whole thing about arguing positions is just a distraction from the source of the problem, which is people's woundedness. And so women in particular, there's a lot of men there. I mean, men are being triggered in a different way. Although there are plenty of men who have also been the victims of sexual assault. So all of us can get triggered when we have that in our history. And so when your buttons are pushed and you want to lash out at somebody, it's just an indication that something just got triggered that's asking to be healed. And first and foremost, we need to stop, take a deep breath, do not post anything anywhere, like step back from the keyboard do the responsible thing for yourself, especially. Empower yourself by stepping back from the keyboard and instead finding someone that you can talk to about how your buttons just got pushed. Once you do that, once you're able to vent and, and, and get the support you need, then we're able to communicate in a way that's going to actually get us heard. Because when you lash out at somebody, you're not being heard. It might feel good for an instant, and that's usually what happens is we lash out and we say something because we're just pissed or we're scared or we're frustrated or we're re-traumatized in that moment. And it, it, 
it's a, a way of sort of letting out some of that energy, but it doesn't fix the inherent issue, which is the wounding. You know, I, I was speaking with one woman this week who had been assaulted as a young girl and said that last week was a horrible week for her, that she just, not only did she relive the assault, but she remembered things she hadn't remembered before. And we know, you know, all you have to do is read now to recognize that people who have been traumatized don't remember, uh, don't necessarily remember anything, and yet something can get triggered, something can get triggered within them and they suddenly do have a memory or they have additional memories to what they remembered before. And this particular woman I was speaking to said to me, you know, it's been, it's been hard for me to even just function during the week. And I said to her, you need to get some therapy. You need to get some support. You can't expect to deal with, this is a big deal. You can't expect to deal with it alone. So rather than lashing out online, um, love yourself enough to get the support you need. And I would encourage you, like, I, I don't discuss politics with people, not at this point. I mean, I may with my close friends, we may talk about what's going on here and how we feel about it as a way to vent in a safe way. Um, but I'm, I'm not interested in debate as sport. I'm not interested in, I see when people get triggered. There are people I love dearly who have completely opposite views than I do. And I love them dearly anyway. And I do my best to try and figure out how I can learn to be a more loving and compassionate person instead of judgmental and pointing fingers. And it's not easy. It is not easy. There are times I just feel like I want to shake people. Um, but that's about me. And I have to like step back and deal with my own reactions first so that I can then communicate with others in a way that's going to make a difference. And that's a, it's kind of growing up, right? It's what we do as we grow up. We tend to the wounds within us that need healing and need support. And as we do that, we find our voice and we're able to speak up and we feel more empowered and we're able to act from a more adult place than a young wounded place. So along with not, you know, just checking yourself before you post something um, nasty, uh, check in with yourself and see if you're getting triggered. Now, the opposite of that is, you know, one of the things we don't hear enough about is how we have, how the internet and Facebook and Twitter and, you know, uh, Instagram, whatever, how it gives us an opportunity to spread goodness and love and kindness around the world. So what if you made a point of every time you're on social media of looking at one person that, um, that you know, looking for a post or something that you can respond to. Like today, I was, um, I was on Twitter. I had posted, I know some of you saw, I had posted earlier that um, my publisher is uh, selling, has the, my, the ebook of Waking Up in Winter on sale um, for $1.99. So I posted that on Twitter and I posted it on Instagram and here on Facebook. And I saw that a friend of mine, a gentleman that I know, Kamal, you've, some of you may remember a video that um, I posted with him a while ago. He wrote a beautiful novel called Rebirth and I highly recommend it. It's about his, his um, it's a novel, but it's based on his walk of the Camino. And um, so when I looked on Twitter, I noticed that he had tweeted something about the book being on sale, but just said this, the kindest thing about me, like, you know, just something really kind about me being a good human being. And I, it just, you know, I thought, wow, what a lovely thing to do. Now, Kamal is one of the most loving people I know. Every, this is a man where every time you speak to him, he'll say, what can I do to support you? Just imagine that. Imagine if you started doing that with the people you spoke to. If included in your conversations, you said, Tell me, is there anything I could do to support you today? Just saying that. Or posting something that acknowledges a strength that someone has or an accomplishment that someone's made or, you know, a picture that you liked or the fact that someone's got a great eye. You know, we could use, instead of using the internet for uh, our unexpressed rage <laughs> and our unhealed wounds, um, we could use it to actually spread a lot of love in the world. And I'm trying to find ways today, you know, when it was a 
yucky day out. I went out, I stopped in Starbucks and I got myself something to drink and paid for the two people behind me and just said, you know, just, and I felt better because of it. And I scooted out of there as quickly as I could. And I thought, you know what, that's just going to be a kind act for today. And I know that we've all, you know, we've all heard about um, random acts of kindness. I'm sure you've heard about that. This is a time that we need more kindness and we need, <clears throat> and we meet, need more self-awareness. We need more introspection. We need more healing is really what we need. I mentioned, um, hold on. I mentioned the book, The Chalice and the Blade by Rian Eisler. It was published in the late 80s. It's a really powerful book. It's actually easy to read. Don't be turned, don't, you know, don't be afraid of the fact that it's, it's um, got a lot of history in it. When I read this book, and I learned about the history going all the way back to the ancient Minoan times, the goddess cultures, the um, egalitarian societies where men and women were considered equal and art and creativity was revered. Um, it really changed. It rocked my world. There were things in history that I had never been taught in school that were in this book. And um, it's really groundbreaking. And um, I would really, really encourage you, men and women, I would encourage you to take your time, maybe start a book group and read it. Uh, it's a very, very powerful book. Even today, how many years later? You know, 20, 25, 30 years later, 30 years later, um, it's still a very important book. And Rian talks about the two modes of society, the dominator model that's been around forever, divide and conquer, right? Rome comes in, you know, takes over. When I was in Ireland, traveling around Ireland, reading about the history of Ireland and how, you know, the Vikings came and the English came, like, it's always about conquering and um, war and aggression and power over. That's what patriarchy is about, power over, or the dominator model of society, power over others. It doesn't work. And what does work is the partnership model. And that's really what I'm suggesting here is I'm saying, you know, let's be good partners for one another. Let's do our own healing work. It's just like in a marriage or in any relationship. Could be two colleagues at work, could be a business partner, could be brother and sister, mother and daughter, father and daughter. Um, any good relationship requires both people to commit to their own self-awareness, to look at their own healing that needs to be done so that they can interact with each other in a sane, loving, healthy way. And as we do that work individually, we then contribute to society in a better way. And um, we need more women. You know, we know from the work of, um, oh gosh, what's her name? Um, it'll come to me. She's done, uh, uh, anyway, studies about men and women, it'll come to me. I don't know why I can't think of it right now. It's probably because I'm live here with you. Um, you just don't understand. That's the book I'm thinking of. Terry, if you could look that up for me. Deborah Tannen, got it. <laughs> Forget it, Terry, thank you. You just don't understand. Deborah Tannen's work about how boys and girls are raised. Boys are raised to compete with one another. That's how they relate to one another. And I'm generalizing here. Women are more relational. Um, we are raised to be supportive of one another. And so um, it's, you know, in some ways, it's the classic example of dominator versus partnership. And Deborah Tannen's done a tremendous amount of work about the differences between how boys and girls are raised and then what happens in the world. And so anyway, I'm going to be quiet and look at your comments here in just a second. But um, I just want to say that you'll be amazed at how less anxious you feel, how more empowered you feel. Um, how more hopeful you feel as you start to look for what's good in the world and you start to be kind and you intentionally do things like post wonderful messages. Like I said it last Facebook Live, I'll say it again, The Daily Optimist. Every day I get a list of good things that are happening in the world and there's not a, a time that goes by when I don't read that list and think, oh my God, thank you. There's such good people in the world doing amazing things all over the planet. And we get stuck with just hearing about the horrible things that are going on. And um, yeah, so look for good and be a source of good. Uh, it'll make you feel better, I promise. I promise. All right, let me look. Oops, sorry. Let me look at some of your comments here. 
thank you so much for all your comments. Um, and I'm hoping I can't always go back, which makes me crazy. Uh, yeah, so Andrew just changed his entire house to LED. Way to go. You'll be so happy and your electric bill is going to go way down. Wait till you see. Yes, vote, Sarah says, so important. Please recognize you, you, your vote makes a huge difference. Hi, Donna. I'm glad you're here. Um, and hi, Cheryl Crowley. Welcome here. I'm glad you're here too. Um, Betsy says, I just cleared a bunch of overgrown gardens last year and replanted them with flowers, bushes, and a cute little redbud tree. I have a redbud tree too, Betsy. Aren't they awesome? 75% of them were given to me by friends and neighbors. I do the same. Then I took on my neighborhood front entrance garden, found seven people who also wanted to, to enjoy working on it together. There's a great example, Betsy. Thank you so much. I know what you mean about the, um, the neighborhood front entrance. I mean, those kinds of things, working together, working cooperatively together, um, creating beauty. I mean, that's the other thing I didn't say. I, did, I wrote it in the blog last week. Um, look for something beautiful. When you're feeling the most anxious, the most angry, look for beauty. Beauty is the language of the divine. It is such an example of um, the feminine present in the world. And when we see something beautiful, a bird at a feeder, the sun setting, trees blowing in the wind, you know, clouds in the sky, it instantly brings us into the present moment. And it's in that moment that we feel more peaceful and more empowered for sure. Um, let's see. Yeah, Donna is saying that over the last two years, so many things have happened in her family that she's been out in nature. She goes out when she gets down in the dumps. Good. Um, so important to do that, my dear. Absolutely. Let's see. I know it's getting darker and darker in here, this, the, the, all the lights going. Um, let's see. Yeah, Susan says, uh, me too, horrible week, should have not watched him, did not sleep for two nights, had to have a bunch of extra therapy. Yeah, this is a hard time for so many people. You know what? Listen, it's, it just sucks. It just sucks to see a group of people who are making decisions about your country that don't look like you. There's so few women. And that has to change. Everybody will benefit from that changing. We need more women involved in politics. Fortunately, there's a lot of women running, and what's happening is creating a giant shift, and that's important. Um, and I totally, I send love to you, Susan, because I know it's hard. I know it's very difficult. Um, hi, Kristen. I'm glad you're here. And Christine. Um, Yes, positive people can have a tremendous, a very powerful influence, for sure. Um, yep. Uh, Joanne, I'm just looking. Thank you, Cheryl. For me, sharing my story on Facebook was liberating. It showed me that the healing practices I've involved myself in has been right for me, has magnified the love and compassion I have for others. My path is now to let, let others know that I hear you, I see you, and I am you. So, you're, so, so you who are wounded are not alone. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Hola, Fer Gonzalez. Welcome. Glad you're here. Um, thank you, Torn. And um, yeah, so, okay. Um, I can't, you know, for some reason, it's not letting me go back to your comments, which I hate that. Um, but let's see. I'm just looking. <laughs> Griselda says, I am a joy germ. Spread, I spread it everywhere. That's awesome. I love that. That's very funny. Um, yeah. Hi, mom. My mother's here. Hi, mom. I'm glad you're here. That's great. Um, Okay. Yes. Uh, so uh, let me see. Is this? Oh, Sarah wants to know, is there still room in the retreat? Sorry, sweetheart. There isn't. It's full. But make sure you put yourself on the wait list. Go to CherylRichardson.com because um, you'll know about the next one first. Um, so Betsy says, there are so many good people in the world. We had the most wonderful man who checked us in at Delta in London today. He had the kindest demeanor. 
He was just starting his day. Think of the hundreds of suitcases he will lift onto conveyor belts today. Think of all those lines. I really admired him and thanked him so much. Now, see, what's great about this, Betsy, is you remembered him. You showed up here. You felt compared to, compared, compelled to share that story here. This is what happens when we do beautiful things for one another. We just, we're touched by it, and we just feel compelled to tell other people about it. So it is like a germ. It's like a joy germ. It's like, let's spread a different kind of virus. Instead of a virus of hate and rage and misunderstanding, let's spread this virus of love and understanding and compassion and um, patience and a willingness to listen without judgment or without trying to fix things. Just give people space to be heard. So important. You don't. You have no idea how you can impact someone's life through a simple act of kindness. Really, it's amazing. Um, hi, Jasmine. Glad you're here. Let's see. Yeah, Carolyn says, basic manners of respect I was taught as a child. Say hello and how are you when walking by someone? Yeah, sometimes like that. Mandy picks up rubbish when she's out walking her dog. Another beautiful thing to do. Um, yes, let's all speak kindness on social media. Um, you know, just supporting people, even just posting hearts somewhere, you know, why not? Um, anyway, all right, listen, I'm so grateful that you joined me here in this dark room <laughs> now that there's no more light. Um, we are going to get through this. This is a major turning point, uh, not only for the United States, but for the whole country. And sometimes it's got to get really dark before it gets light. At least that's historically how it's been. As we grow and evolve as individual people, as we become more um, self-aware and conscious and loving and supportive and healed, healed. Because, listen, I'm not suggesting that you be loving and supportive when you feel like crap. And I'm not suggesting that you ignore your anger or your rage. Please don't. All of those things are important. You know, two weeks ago when I posted uh, a blog about being so fed up with people who haven't done a bit of work making decisions for our lives, um, there were some people who wrote in and said, oh, I hope you're okay. You know, you, you know, I'm not used to hearing you be angry. And I thought, listen, it's a normal part of who we are. You're, you're entitled to your anger and your rage. You're just not entitled to puke it on other people. Um, and I use that word intentionally because it's gross. Instead, we want to take a step back and look for the source of that and what needs to be healed. Because as we heal, so does the world. Amen. All right. I love you all. And I so appreciate that you take the time to be here with me. I really do. And um, I will look forward to speaking with you again. And I will hold a vision that... We are all healing together, one breath at a time, one kind word at a time, one loving post at a time, <laughs> one act of kindness. Um, we're all healing together. All right, everybody. Lots of love. Take good care of yourself this week. Don't watch too much news. Don't do that. We all know what's going on. Take care of yourself, but make sure you vote. Please make sure you vote. All right. Goodbye, everybody.